You're what is good, y'all. Welcome back to another week of my tarot energy forecast. I'm your girl, Tatiana Tarot. If you are new to my channel, what up? Um, I am a tarot diviner, Ialarisha priestess of the Ifa Arisha Isheshe tradition, a spiritista, spiritist, a mom, and a subtle energy healer. You can find me on my channel every Sunday or Monday, depending on where you're at. Sometimes if I want to do a little razz dazzle, I'll release the videos on Saturday, giving you a forecast on what to expect for the week ahead energetically using tarot and other channeling means so a lot's been going on um a lot has been going on we just recently had the eclipse god knows what it was in it was in taurus it was in scorpio taurus scorpio axis guys i'm not an astrologer but not only do we have the eclipse going on but globally we have the genocide happening in Palestine and Gaza, we have what's going on in the Congo, we have what's going on in Sudan, we have what's going on in every part of the world. And so energetically, we're really, really feeling the intensity, we're feeling the trauma, we're feeling probably a little bit helpless and 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 grieving is is quite normal at this time so i just wanted to take a moment for us to settle in and not necessarily break the bread with this sort of energy but just prepare us for whatever messages we are to receive from this video let it sink let it marinate let it integrate um let us cleanse our energy bodies of whatever has been permeating that is not for our highest good and also prepare our vessels to be able to be of divine service and divine use whether that's within our own lives within our own families to our communities or maybe even on a larger global scale so if you guys are new to me new to my work and you already feel like this is hidden and resonating with you go ahead like and subscribe to just be notified when i drop these videos <clears throat> anybody who has been used to my work then you know we do a lot of these meditations in my possessor spirit membership this online portal where i teach master classes workshops mini courses guided meditations um downloadable guided meditations right so if you guys are looking for resources on how to cope or best manage or access wisdom at this time in order for you to just be clear on how you should be moving in and through your own life and perhaps even um, on a larger scale, you can access that. And again, if you guys have participated in my Tower Challenge, then you have the meditations. You can utilize those meditations to give you more insight and clarity. But nevertheless, let's get into this um, quick brief check-in. I want everybody to just take a moment to pause and take a deep breath take a deep breath and just bring your awareness into your body bring your awareness into your body and soften the breath bringing in divine light into your body with every inhale Whatever that feels like or looks like for you, represents for you. And with every exhale, you're releasing tension. You're releasing stress. You're releasing the worries that you have accumulated. So I want you from this space of embodiment to now access this portal that we all have within us, this portal of divinity. If the divine lives within us and it has a cell within us, it has its own spirit and life within us, I want you to just get a sense of where that would be. This portal of divinity that lives within you. And in and from this space, just even your intention or knowing or a sensation 
Don't second guess it. But I want you to acknowledge your own uh, brilliance. The own manifestation of your own spirit, your own identity, your spirit, your radiance. And in and through this portal, I want you to invite all of the guides that want to assist you here today. Knowing that you're safe and protected, knowing that we're inviting the highest good, knowing that in and through this portal, only the highest good can come through. Right? And so even with that invitation, get a sense of a, a knowing. You might just know what guides are coming through for you, whether it's animals, whether it's um, ancestors, whether it's other humanistic or non-humanistic guides. Just get a sense. As my child plays in the background. <laughs> And now I want you to connect to source itself, creator, source, God, goddess, whatever you want to identify it as, the all that permeates through all things, connecting to that and taking an extra step to let go and surrender. Surrendering the need to control how you're going to get information, how a problem is going to be solved, how to handle a particular situation, and just knowing that you have your own spirit, your guides, source, creator, to carry that load for you. And in that surrendering, whether it be through some sort of image, gesture, este symbol, intention. I want you to now envelop yourself in the light of grace, whatever that means for you. Divine light, grace, unconditional love. And allow this light to pour in, in every aspect of your body, in and through your blood, in and through your cells, the deepest parts of your cells, the memory banks, your bones, your bone marrow, in and through every part of your chakras, maybe even your throat chakra, I'm getting a little choked up here. In and through your past, past lives, the current life you're living through, potential future lives. And we're asking this divine light, we're asking the light of grace to cleanse anything that does not belong there. Trusting that source in our guides and our own spirit knows what belongs there and knows what doesn't what we are ready to let go of, what we have closed a chapter on, what we have outgrown and learned, or what is in our field that just doesn't need to be there. Other people's energies, other people's fears, thoughts, suggestions, programming. We we'll ask that all cords that are attached to us be gently removed by this light from all parties involved, not just on our end, but that end too. And that this energy be sent back up to source. We ask that this energy permeates through any and all energetic contracts that we are binded to that no longer serve us at this point in time, at this point in our timeline. Just get a sense of where this is affecting you. Maybe you're getting images, maybe you're getting sound, maybe you're just knowing certain chords that are being detached from you from people, certain contracts that are arising.
So I'm getting the word self-sacrificial. Maybe some of us are bending over backwards, doing the most for people, other places and things, and not getting properly reciprocated. And I'm also getting the sense that this divine grace, this light wants us to now open up our vessels to be able to receive more, to be able to position ourselves to receive more, whether that is love, whether that is self-care, whether that is praise, admiration, opportunities, abundance, or just the acknowledgement of how abundant we are already. The acknowledgement of the gifts that we already hold and carry so we can turn these gifts online and be able to use them to us for ourselves and for others if you feel called. And if you feel called to now go ahead and send this light of grace to your ancestors. To the ancestors of your maternal and paternal lineages. To your most elevated ancestors and perhaps those ancestors that are not so elevated that need to be reminded of the light. Take this moment to say your own prayer, whatever is surfacing up for you, in honor of this ancestral season. And now take this divine light and go ahead and permeate it out throughout the world to those that are in need in Gaza, here in your own local country or home, indigenous people of the world, to Africa, to the Middle East, to all places that are in deep need of grace, of peace, of healing, of radical miracles and transformation. And again, you're not doing the work, but you are granting permission for the work to be done in and through you and from you as sovereign energetic beings. And just take note of maybe what guides or what information you're picking up on, even when it comes to your own ancestral healing your personal healing. Take a moment to set any intentions with this divine light and to continue to pour that divine light of grace onto you. If there's anything that you feel you need at this time, more love, more ease, more healing. You might not even know what it is that you need, but you're now asking and surrendering the divine to fill up your cup and provide you with whatever it is that you need as creator and your guides know what's best. Take a moment to give thanks, give thanks to your own spirit, give thanks to your guide, give thanks to creator and bring yourself back to the present moment. You can take a moment to breathe, integrate, process, Pause this video if you want to write down your discoveries, if you've seen anything that you feel you want to further investigate, if you were shown signs, symbols, songs, reminders to do things, homework maybe from the spirit realm, or just a soft acknowledgement that the work has been done, the work is working, the work is working through you, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's get into this week. Before we officially get into this week, I just want to give a soft reminder. This may be a little late when you're watching this. It depends if you're watching this Saturday evening, Sunday, Monday. But um, my 10-week course, Embodying the High Priestess, Tarot Divination 101, will be launching next month 
November 15th. It is the last time that I'm teaching this course live. It is a, such a special offering that I have curated for years with the assistance of my guides. And from the 20 plus years that I've been reading people, okay, if you know me, I've been reading since I was six years old, child. So it's so much knowledge that I pour into this 10 week course so that you guys don't have to buy the books. You don't have to go through trials and tribulations on learning how to read. I teach you through a very traditional lens on how to read the cards, which is practically mediumship and ancestral veneration and allowing your guides, your dead, your ancestors to teach you how to read the cards for yourself and maybe even devising your own mythology on reading tarot divination. And so if you are interested in enrolling Today, as in Sunday, October 29th, the end of Sunday, October 29th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is the last time you can take advantage of getting $300 off the full price of the course or $300 off the payment plan, okay? So if you wanna get $300 off the full course, just type in with capital letters ETHP in the checkout box, if you want to get $300 off the payment plan, okay, you can use the code capital letters E-T-H-P-P-L-A-N and then check out code. All this information is going to be noted down below. The link is www.tarotpriestess.com. It is the link down below. Take advantage because after the 29th, the course will go back to its full price. So I'm really excited to see you guys there. Again, starts next month. You can join us for 10 consecutive weeks or you can go ahead and do it at your own pace. All right, um, you have lifetime access. Every live recording will be, again, recorded and put in the module. You will be getting, um, you know, it's not just a tar tarot course. Again, it's really an introduction to mediumship in a safe way, learning cleansings and protections and ancestral venerations and elevations, and of course, learning this 78 tarot card system and how you relate to that system. But um, learning, um, positive orientations, negative orientations, spreads, numerology, um, problem solving in and through tarot, how to take appropriate action steps from the information you receive in the cards. Some of us read cards and we don't know what to do with that information, so I teach you how to do that. You have a really dope community and in on top of those 10 weeks, you get four q a sessions with me live with the community so as we're doing the material you can pick my brain so to speak or practice with the community and practice with me on some real life questions that we may have or samples or reading you know um pop culture or what's going on in the world live and and just chiming in and giving your perspective on the spread in the cards it's so much fun i can't wait down below, last day, October 29th, is the last day to get that $300 off. So let's get started on um, what to expect for this week ahead. This week is Monday, October 30th, all the way to Sunday, November 5th. Again, we are using the right away. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really a traditional girly. I'm not into the decks that are glamorous or OD fluffy, OD artistic. I like tried and true methods that I've been using in my youth. Look, this is my old ass Rider weight deck. If you guys know, the OG is not deliberately bent. It's just years of use. I mean, they look very archaic and they smell... They smell divine. They smell like ancient incense. <laughs> so I've got these decks for reference point. And of course, I've got my friend's deck, Chalks of Kikongo. If you want to go ahead and pick that up, the link is down below. But let's get into it. Great Spirit, what is it that we need to know for Monday, October 30th? and Tuesday, October 31st. This is the end of October. So what is it that we are following up on when it comes to the aftermath of this eclipse 
but also summoning up the end of October. What is it that we need to be mindful of and be aware of? Okay. Yikes. Um, so the first card pulled, we are getting the Ten of Wands. Yes, indeed, honey. And we are getting the Page of Wands. Yes, indeed, baby. This is for Monday the 30th and Tuesday the 31st. Okay, Ten of Wands is a card that is very indicative of struggle. It is very indicative of stress, of doing things in a very outdated way, in a very archaic way, and pretty much in a senseless way. So what this is bringing up to our awareness is one, what might be hyper, uh, what might be hyper illustrated in our internal world and external world is the energy of struggle, the energy of um, possibly oppression, okay? The energy of, you know, what I'm getting is the image of a Coca-Cola bottle that just keeps on Shaking it, shaking it, shaking it. You put it down, you release the bottle, and it like combusts. That's the image that I'm getting. So on an internal level, I want you guys to be aware of any emotions, thoughts, new ideas and epiphanies that are coming up for you or maybe memories of the past of things that have not been resolved yet where the theme is enough is enough. Enough is enough. I no longer want to struggle in this way. I no longer want to take on this story, this paradigm, this programming. I no longer want to support this, whether it's a personal habit, whether it's something that has perpetuated in your ancestral lineage that you have taken on, whether it's a behavior that you've inherited and learned in your childhood, whether it is a reality that you're coming to terms with that is no longer conducive to your well-being um, and your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual liberation. Um, Ten of Wands is saying things are being done in a manner where it is where you're working harder, not smarter. And this could be in terms of literal work. It can be terms of your emotional disposition where you are recreating habits, thought patterns, behaviors, belief systems that are now causing you to struggle or framing things in a perspective that now elicits struggle from you. Um, and it's time to update the system or it's time to place boundaries and say enough is enough, or it's time to open up to the possibilities of change now occurring to liberate yourself from this struggle paradigm. Or now it's time to just realize that the cycle, the karmic pattern is now ending with you, okay? So there's a lot going on. Of course, there's a lot going on globally, so this is going to be hitting us harder and of course, in such predicaments as this, you may be asking yourself, well, you know, I feel helpless in and through my own life. How do I lend a hand globally? You know, um, and the point is not to assume a superhero stance. The point is to start thinking critically over your own life and ways that you have been bounded to some sort of, again, um, an agreement, it could be a literal agreement, it could be something that is left unsaid that stays bounded and you need to speak up in order to free yourself. It could be an energetic contract that needs to be resolved that is just perpetuating from lifetime to lifetime. It could be you finally 
taking a stand, speaking up for yourself or removing yourself from a situation or removing elements from your life so that you can have a sigh of relief and less pressure on you. Um, just note that with the 10 of wands, there will be some action taken. This is not just on an energy standpoint. There's definitely some sort of energetic change and a catalyst that's happening. Whether you're aware of it now or it comes a little later, something is brewing up inside of you that is now taking a stand. That's putting like a stick on the ground and saying, that's it. You will no longer get the same version of me. Moving forward, my DNA has been altered. My stance has been altered. My perspective has been altered. And the way that you see me has been altered. If you see me in the same way, then you must be following the same old paradigm that I just came out of. And you cannot come along with me in this next iteration of my life, right? And so there will be some sort of action step you will be called to take. Again, if that's not clear right now, it's going to be clear in the next days, weeks, or months to come. Okay, because you're coming to some sort of literal or figurative breaking point, which is going to require that you don't stay the same. If you want change, then things need to change. You yourself needs to change, right? And so... I think we're, again, we're feeling this from an internal and external collective standpoint. Um, there is some sort of metaphorical light at the end of the tunnel. There is some sort of almost glimpse, a gl glimpse of hope, even though you might not be able to see it buried in these sticks. You might not be able to see it amongst the 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 battles or the, the 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 strife and the struggle that you're currently in but here in the back of the illustration and the symbol here with the ten of wands is ten con connotates an ending it it it, it 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 um indicates some sort of a revelation of sorts ten is the highest number you can essentially get in the tarot system then we start back up with the aces okay or this, the, 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 the court card, so to speak, and then the aces. Um, but 10 is almost saying that this is cataclysmic in some sort. And it, again, it bears to note that you guys might want to review, even if you're not astrology nerds, do your research, follow your astrologers online, go do your, your chart and see where this eclipse is hitting you. It could very much be hitting a part of your chart where... There's some sort of aspect of your life where you're just like, that's it, okay? And this, again, it may not be some sort of external oppress oppressor. Of course, that's not the case for everyone. You know, we're all dealing with something globally. But on an, a personal scale, it may be a fragment of your own personality, a fragment of your own spirit that's outdated. That's like... We're not going to play the victim anymore. We're not going to allow this behavior anymore. We're not going to allow this sort of patterning that has been exhibited in my family for so long to be repeated through me. So there is some sort of disciplinary action, but it is going to be coupled with clarity, motivation, and the desire to become something that you've never been before in order to free yourself, in order to really have the life that you feel worthy of and, you know, um, to kind of say, hello, it's like this, 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 this turning point where you're wakening up, you're awakening and you're saying, look at what's going on with the world. Um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have breath. I'm fortunate enough to have a voice. I'm fortunate enough to have food. What am I going to do with this life I've been given? Am I just going to keep on with this monotonous cycle and take things for granted and do the bare minimum? Or am I really just going to try to live each day as if it was my last, live to the fullest, take what I want, you know, seize the day? Um, go after my desires, go, go, you know, let bygones be bygones, not let, let these things 
trivial things past, not waste my time on things that are not providing value. Really um, respect and honor myself in a way that I have not before really lead life with a sense of conviction and um, hunger. That is what we're getting with the Ten of Wands. But again, it was coupled with the Page of Wands, which is kind of backing up my stance, saying there is action that's going to be taken. There is courage here. We are ready to confront the bully. We are ready to confront the obstacle, the opposition, the resistance, whether that is resistance coming from deep within, I think a lot of your personal shadows are going to come to the light. I think you're going to realize that you are your worst enemy. And uh, when you know how to cope with that in a healthy way, you can cope with things on a larger scale. So um, prepare to have things shake up internally. Prepare to make decisions and moves that may shake other things up too. Family members, relationships, people, uh, things are going to be in motion. You might be moving, you might be leaving a job, you might be starting a job, you might be saying things that have you've never been said before, you might be doing different things courses of action with your body that have never been done before. You might be deciding to work out now to, to alleviate some of the tension and pressure. You may be dropping people from your life or dropping things that are um, absorbing too much of your time and focus or not giving you the nourishment that you need. You know, I think now is not a time where we're settling into a definitive identity and a definitive ending. We don't necessarily know what lies ahead with the Page of Wands, but the Page of Wands is going to go out there and see what is possible. They're going to explore. They're going to lead with curiosity. They're going to be, again, courageous and bold. This is the element of fire we have Fire in a very destructive manner where it's saying this is burning me down. This is weighing me down. This is burning me out. And you have fire in a very constructive beneficial energy where this is the fire of innovation, ingenuity, creativity, possibility, um, and, and sieging in the most possible way. Let's siege, let's take what is ours. Let's, let's not play the victim. Let's be the hero to our own story and see where that takes us. We're not gonna find out unless we try. So this week, you know, the beginning of these two days, you're gonna have to decide on something that is going to call you to get out of your comfort zone, to be more courageous, to be more authentic with yourself because doing anything else would be a lie to your spirit. And so are you going to choose a passive path or are you going to be 100% authentic to self and the life that you were chosen to lead um, and live? Um, you. What's interesting with the Page of Wands is that you might be getting some sort of role model in your life that embodies the very energy that you want for yourself. And so see this as inspiration, see this as fuel, see this as motivation. You know, this could be it's a week where maybe you're listening to motivational talks or watching things that are giving you a glimpse of possibility and hope, like maybe researching the Haitian Revolution and how victorious that was and the spiritual undertones and implications of what happened behind the scenes to make that a, a successful revolution. And, and, you know, that was just one example. But, you know, maybe even connecting to the warriors and the fearless leaders in your own lineage, particularly at a time like this where it's deeply sacred to be connecting to your dead, you might want to be calling on these forces to guide you in what is quite literally the unknown, you know, guide you through this void, this chapter where you don't know what's coming up next and you need 
the flashlight you need the light in the darkness and so that light in your darkness may very well be the presence of those fearless ancestors that have undergone parallel circumstances if not worse circumstances and did not have the blueprint to do so you have leverage here to use it to use them to call on them even if you don't know their names um leaders warriors trailblazers um, the black sheep in the family, like if you're watching this, you chances are you are the black sheep in your family in some way. And this is catalyzing you to do things radically different than the ones that have been asleep in your lineage, you know, so on and so forth. And so I think when you have clarity on what to do or how to do it and how to go about doing it, it is going to give you a feeling of alignment it is going to feel right it is going to feel exciting it's going to feel like possibility it's going to feel like expansion so let's see what's going on for november 1st november 2nd wednesday and thursday november 1st and november 2nd wednesday and thursday of this of the month November 1st, the beginning. Great Spirit, what do they need to know about November 1st and November 2nd? Um, baby, if there was ever a time where you had to and i think i spoke about this last video it's like do a rehaul do an a corporate evaluation of your life assess every area assess every person assess every action just if you're just in a time where it's like is this serving me is this not serving me is this beneficial is this draining me is this using me is this helping me along the way so on and so forth now is the time, okay? These cards are not playing with nobody. This is really a call for those that are really serious about living their lives in a very intentionally purposeful way. You'll notice you walk around life and there are actual living zombies. Like these humans are zombies and they're just they're just off. They're like very much like the Matrix. People are offline robots zombies and then you have the few that are online that know what's up that know that they're here to do stuff that that are here to take their power back and maybe so for wednesday and thursday november 1st and november 2nd we are getting the seven of swords all right this is the first card that was pulled i want you to take a moment here especially after our meditation and just kind of get a sense into what this card is telling you what this card is showing you right and then we are also getting the hermit card here so with the seven of swords the seven of swords it still looks like we're continuing onward with the theme of struggle with the theme of struggle except we have a different suit now we don't have the wands, the fiery wands. We have the air swords, okay? So when it comes to the seven of swords, this is a card of what is traditionally known, a card to be of deception, a card to be of trickery, a card to be of abuse, or abuse doesn't have to be in the sense of physical abuse but it could be mental abuse um whether you're you're um i forget the word whether you're placing yourself in an environment to be mentally abused or you're mentally abusing yourself through your thoughts and what you tell yourself what you tell your spirit on a daily basis Trickery, taking advantage and not being, not noticing it. Someone taking advantage of you 
and not noticing it. This card inherently talks about your worth, your self-worth. The value is very high and you are not treating yourself as such. And therefore, there could be leeches and leaks in your aura, your energy field. Whether that is excessive alcohol, excessive toxic food, excessive habits and behaviors, excessive toxic people in your life. Um, or you literally having relationships drain you. Um, or you're giving more than what you are receiving. Okay, you need to really rewind and watch that again because there is a leech, there is trickster energy where it may somebody may be smiling in your face and trying to glamour you like the vampires glamour people smile while they're mentally manipulating you to take on their agenda on a global note this may be media things that you read things that you hear things that you see are not what you, what they truly are there's an agenda behind the scenes you are being tricked you are being fooled you are being fed you are being manipulated you are being um used as a puppet okay and this may not be things that are so blatantly obvious like news coverage over what's going on with the tragedies of the world but these may be subtle things like an excessive exposure to pop media and that draining your time and your energy when you could be doing more productive things. Watching a show that is supposed to be body positive, but really it's just like a subtle commercial for body modification products or something of the sort that's feeding you a different agenda in your brain. Be very mindful of the energy you're consuming and be very mindful of the people, places, things, objects, media that is consuming your energy. Okay? And be selective. This is really a powerful time to be mindful of your autonomy and sovereignty and be hyper disciplined and selective and choosy being the magician of your own life there's a specific outcome i want and these things are not conducive to that outcome i choose what i think i choose what i say i choose what i believe i don't care what's being shown outside of me the magician knows that the internal shift happens first and the external shift follows it's very the matrix i would advise you to watch the matrix study it read up about it i'm sure there's a lot of philosophy about the matrix a lot of philo philosophical wisdom about the matrix also, I think the Matrix was actually created by a, by a black woman and not definitely not the Wachowski brothers, but that's another. Um, she, made the Ma she made the Matrix, she made the Terminator, and all her money was stolen. Her ideas were stolen, the script was stolen, but that's another, that's another conversation for another day. But again, it goes with theft, stealing energy, Stealing your time and your attention. What's stealing your time and your attention? That is a currency. We think about money as a currency, but we in our, ourselves are currencies. What are you giving? What are you spending so much money on? And where is it going to behind the scenes? Who are you supporting online? Who are you supporting in real life? Are your friends supporting you? Are they pouring into you? Um... This is, spirit is talking about physical intimacy too, being very calculated, being very clear on who you're physically intimate with during this time. What kind of spirits does that person carry? What kind of trauma does that person carry deep in their DNA so that when you are intimate with them, you're getting that into your body. You're getting that energy into your body. This could be a time to clear again, like we did in the beginning of this video, clearing 
our energy fields. <clears throat> um, we do this a lot in Possess Your Spirit. You can find a lot of guided meditations on YouTube on how to do this. Cutting cords. Very strong on cutting cords. So you don't get leached. A cord is created. A cord is an energetic link. It's a bond. It's a tie that is created amongst two individuals. Okay? And it could be created in any area of your body and your life that is also a representation of a larger aspect of your energy. Cords are created not only maliciously, they are not always created maliciously, they are usually created very subconsciously. And it could be created by children, it could be created by parents, partners, co workers, and environment. And so it's not like, oh, someone's like, I'm deliberately courting you and trying to siphon up your energy. But what it is, is an energetic exchange. I get this from you. You get this from me. Maybe somebody who is not vocal, who is not in their power, who is not uh, feeling empowered. They look to a celebrity and they uh, worship that celebrity or they admire that celebrity and they court themselves to that celebrity solar chakra because that is the region of willpower, of strength, of, of one's personal conviction, one's ability to manifest something through their will and their conviction. And because that other person doesn't have that together yet, they create a subtle invisible cord where they're siphoning that energy for themselves, but the person they're siphoning it from maybe gets drained and diminished some sort of codependency here. So we all have cords and the point is even if they're not harmful, the point is that everyone should be accessing their own energy field, having their own energy be recycled and used and cleansed. And you, if you're not accessing energy directly from source, creator, God, goddess, and you don't need to be accessing it from anywhere else, right? And so the point is to clear the cords, clear any agreements that are made maybe subtly or vocally um, uh, through a past life, through a present life, um, so on and so forth. So there may be cords that you need to go back and, and hold on. So with cords, yes, you can clear them, but chances are you got to clear them over and over and over again. Even if you are on social media, people cord themselves to you, unbeknownst to you, um, at work, at in a train station, in a busy city, with your family, your kids. It doesn't like some of this is very harmful. I mean, some of this is very harmless, innocent, unbeknownst to you, unbeknownst to them very subtle unseen unknown right some of it is very clear you see someone that you don't like and it's like uh right you get that energy from them uh they're not confident they're jealous of you for your confidence da 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 da, da vice versa it, it has to be clear assess your sorrow assess your grief assess um or be present with it Really at this time with the Seven of Swords, really try to not take on other people's stuff. Calls for cleansing, calls for energetic cleansing, calls for physical cleansing, 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 cleansing. The veil, there is no veil, theoretically, okay, but if you want to believe that, okay, more power to you. There is no veil. However, this time is more energetically heightened when it comes to spiritual activity which then lends to more cleansing and pro proactivity and cleansing and protecting your energy and just being on top of that so you can get clarity so you can know what to do and you're not confused because there's so much stuff going on around you you're getting other people's stuff thinking it's your stuff or your mind is very foggy or you can't think straight so on and so forth um Spirit is saying, be mindful of people who are begging, energetically begging. You know, look for the red flags straight ahead in any area of your life. Don't let them have to show you twice. If the red flag already happened once, once is enough. Right? Um, energetic leeches, begging, siphoning your energy, just wasting your time. It is very much I said what I said season. Because I don't have time to waste because I value myself and my life and, and my time on earth. 
And I don't have time to go. This is not a tennis match. I am not Venus. I am not Serena Williams. I will not go back and forth with this nonsense. I said what I said. Clearing the energy. Okay? You cannot be playing with fools and you cannot play the fool. <laughs> All right? That's what spirit is saying. Seven of Swords is really interesting because we still see the aftermath of the Ten of Wands where we're carrying. We can't see things. The Seven of Swords, we're carrying things that are heavy for us. What are some things that you just need to let go? There's just some things that you will not get a solution on. You will not get an answer on at this point in your life. It might come later. It might it, you, you might get epiphanies later, but right now you need to let it go. Okay, so that might be a person, that might mean opportunity that you've just been like, it's time for a plan B, plan C, just give, let go, let God, let your ancestors handle it, and when the time is right, the time is right, what's meant for you is meant for you, it will not pass you by, -da -da -da, let it go, okay? Este, if you're going to make the intention to move forward with the Seven of Swords, Keep on saying seven of wands, I think. Seven of swords. Um, move forward. Don't move forward and then like, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> oh, no, wait. <laughs> if you said what you said, don't go back on it. Act like you're from Brooklyn. If you said what you said, don't go back on it. All right. Keep on moving forward. All right. And we have the hermit. Which means this is not a time to socialize. This is not a time to be, let me see what this person's energy is like. Let's hang out. No. Unless they're on the same wavelength as you and there's a lot of resonance there, please don't. Mm -mm. This is about shielding yourself. This is also about creating sacredness within the home and within the temple of who you are. Sacredness. Silence, introspection, reverence for self, reverence for others, connecting with your spirits more than ever, listening to what they have to say, feeling within your body and through somatic activities, what the spirits in your own lineage are trying to say, are trying to guide you through. You're getting a lot of guidance at this time. So it's not like you left out in the cold. You're just choosing to make things harder. But you are getting a lot of guidance. There is shelter coming to you if you are disciplined enough to take action on what you already know. Really don't play yourself. And don't get played. All right? If you're like, I've been picking up this energy from this person, but they've never shown me a reason to no, time to act on whatever it is you're picking up on. Okay. Oh, but this person's not going to like me. Oh, I'm going to get it. No, I don't care. <laughs> we are, do we are not, we're in the space of upgrading our energy. We're in the space of cleaning the energetic Field, setting the tone for this new shift. And people might clamor. People might see the wisdom that you hold, the peace that you hold, the centering that you hold. They might clamor. Using this illuminating lamp, the wisdom of your own heart, that divinity, that space that we tapped into, your guides, your own spirit source, that is going to tell you who is in true need and who is not. Who you should invest in and who is not. This might be an old aspect of yourself. The one that is wounded from that ex. The one that is wounded from childhood. The one that is worried about this. The one that does not feel worthy. And using grace, shining a light on the root of this, do I still need this energy in my life permeating? What do I need to learn from this? What does this person want? What do they need to say? What is their story? Is this truly like my inner child that's acting out? Like what do I need to 
hear this energy out, give it space to be, and clear it. Or just be able to recognize it if I see it coming two months later. So it doesn't get past the door. It could be right here, but it doesn't get past the door where it's actually affecting me in a very visceral way. I hope that makes sense for you guys. So it will be actual energies. It will be people, it will be places and things. It will be things that you're doing. But you have the wisdom. You have the knowledge. You have the guidance. You are being guided. But this guidance is only going to come if you create sacred space, if you create silence, if you create deliberate distance. This is not being antisocial. It's self-preservation. It's going to the church within. It's putting in time at your temple, making sure your temple is clean, making sure that your temple embodies the divine, making sure that you are listening to the wisdom. Okay, so what's going on the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th of November? There's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th of November, Grace Spirit. What is? What do we need to know? 3rd, 4th, 5th of November, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is the week for doing a lot of the inner work. You are going to, if you guys have a spiritual practice that you've abandoned, it's time to take it back up again. If you were that person that woke up at five in the morning to read the Bible and the passages, it's time to do that again. If you're that person that used to pray to their or read, it's time to do that again. If you're that person that used to connect with your ancestors every Sunday, do that. If you're that person that used to open up their Vovoda and get messages, do that. If you're that person that went to, would recite Nam Nyo Ho and Renge Kyo 50, 11 times for peace, do that. If this is a call to go back to your spiritual practices, to go back to some sort of ritualistic routine, some sort of a coming back home to self, some sort of a teacher, a mentor, a program, a course, a book, mm, right? A, a, a education is very important now. So it's going to highlight your shadows it's going to give you support on not only clearing those shadows because shadows can just permeate at any time but knowing when to recognize when those shadows come up treating it as a friend saying hey what's up i'll go out to you to drink some tea but you're not invited to my house type of energy <laughs> I want to hear what you got to say while you're coming up again. Oh, okay. This is all right. Thank, thank you for letting me know that. And just being able to recognize these trigger points for you. So you, and what I, what I'm trying to say is that education can help you with that. Whether it's in the form of a course, whether it's in the form of a program, a class, a book, a person that you've worked with, a ritual routine, um, a, a, a practice. Okay. You need to go back to that or you need to create one. Whatever is coming to mind is probably the thing that you need to do. Again, shout out, Possess Your Spirit, membership. There's a lot of videos, resources, many courses and stuff to revisit um, in terms of what you may need to clear or go through that's very energetically potent and shifting things for you. All right, um, we're getting the three of swords for this weekend. We're getting the three of swords. This is not, I don't want to say it's a heavy week. It's just a week to clear the heaviness. It is a week where we no longer run from the things that fear we fear or we are trying to avoid, but we confront them gently, swiftly. With an open heart and an open mind. We confront them because we know that's the only way we can learn from them and to move on from them. Okay? 
So this is a this is an initiation. This week is an initiation of sorts. Massively. Um it is saying what have you learned? Have you learned the lesson? Have you learned the lesson? Um and I don't think it's just this timeline. So I'm not getting that. Uh, there may be things that are very real world happening to you from this timeline, but there could be a lot of emotional stuff that is resurfacing. And you're like, what the hell? It may be affecting you in this timeline with other people, but it, the origins and the root of that may not stem from this timeline, if it makes sense. And again, we have ancestral over undertones. So we may have the inheritance of grief and the inherited burdens of our ancestors that are now playing out in our lives, right? And again, we are not Venus, we're not Serena, we can't ping pong it back into the past. It's going to come back. You do not kill energy. You cannot kill energy. You have to transmute that energy. It has to become something else. Therefore, confronting it and getting clear with that is the only way to shift the frequency of that shadow and turn it into something else. Turning into that, that shadow to, to be able to, for it to be something productive for you. A, a lesson, right? <sighs> Your personal proverbs, right? Um, your personal rules. Um, like, this example is coming up to me. I don't know if you guys have ever seen P Valley, but you know Cliff, I think that's their name. Cliff, the owner of P Valley, you know how Cliff has like 5011 rules? Rule number 777. Never do something, something. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like taking those, taking those shadows. Yes, the shadows are not going to go away, so to speak. They can go away, but the point is not to like end them once and for all. The point is to get what the rule is from that shadow. What is the lesson? So that when that shadow comes up again, you know how to cope with it. You know how not to let it manipulate you and not, not to let that shadow overcome you. You are now the master and the, the, the magician of that shadow. You have transmuted that shadow. You have turned it into wisdom. You have turned it into nuggets of gold where you're just like, oh, this shadow's coming out? Rule number 77. Never let somebody step on your shine. I learned that from my childhood because this shadow is telling me that this situation is triggering me and this shadow where I wasn't allowed to shine or be my, my most radiant expressive self. And that's my new rule. That's my new, new mantra. And that's what this is reminding me right now. So thank you, shadow. I see you. And I'm going to do what I can to cope with my inner child. And we're going to move on from it. Okay? Rather being stuck in that energy field where things are just perpetuating over and over again in this rut and you're not getting out of it. It's like Groundhog's Day, the movie, you're just repeating the same thing over and over, not getting the lesson. This is the week where you free yourself from the bindings of repetition, energetic repetition. And that is what the Three of Swords is. It's it's something is weighing down heavily on your heart. Something and some and you know, a lot of these shadows may come with very real life consequences. It may come with real life action you need to take that is going to bring sorrow to you. That is not going to feel comfortable. You might have to end things with people. You might have to have hard conversations or hard realizations. Maybe someone that you thought was really there for you really wasn't. Maybe something that you thought was your path really isn't. Maybe something that you've been having faith in and um, doing for your whole life is shifting now. Maybe your faith is shifting. It's going to look like something different. Right? And that could be not easy. So you really need a lot of sacred space to cope with yourself, to be gentle with yourself. To do research, again, occult, 
studying, reading cards, um, talking to spirits, working your spirits, meditating, subtle energy work, past life regression, timeline jumping, uh, childhood energy. So this came out again. Taking things on from the past, not letting it go. Taking on other people's stuff, not letting it go. Inner child healing. Or really giving yourself space to grieve, fully, fully grieve. These things could be reawakening in you. Okay, it doesn't mean that everything needs to be dealt with and resolved. It could just mean you need to give yourself sacred space to be. Be. And the answers will come from that. All right? The answers will arise in time. So let's see what the chalks of Kikongo, Kikongo have to say. Grace Spirit, what is a final message, final oracle message for us today? Ancestral work. See, I can't make this up even if I tried. Our card is ancestral work. It is our responsibility to take care of the dead so that the ancestors can continue to take care of us. This reciprocal relationship is essential to maintaining harmony between the two worlds, the world of the living and the world of the dead. Keep your ancestors' names and spirits alive through the telling of their stories and the passing down of their names. Perfect, gra perfect grandma's peach cobbler recipe. String uncle's guitar. Braid like auntie. Remembering our loved ones who have passed on is one of the greatest ancestral works we can do. Other meanings. It's above you now. The situation requires assistance from the spirit realm. Ge seek the guidance and support from your honorable ancestors. Tend to your dead folk. Clean their altars. Feed them, offer them their favorite drinks, light a candle in their honor, pray for their elevation, talk to them. This is ancestral veneration. This is ancestral work. Unpopular opinion. You are tethered to all your ancestors, the honorables and the dishonorable ones. Choosing to ignore your disreputable ancestors is choosing to ignore pieces of yourself. Ancestral work involves being uncomfortable. It involves setting boundaries and commanding rectification. It involves demanding that all your ancestors work in alignment to your greatest good. Do not confuse a disreputable ancestor with a useless one. All in all, be patient with yourself when doing this kind of ancestral work as it is interrelated to your shadow work. Okay? Recognize and acknowledge what you have inherited from your family lineage. Claim all debts paid and all blessings of birthright. Dig deeper. Are you consistent in your ancestral veneration or do you only tend to your ancestors when you need something? How do you venerate your ancestors that reach beyond setting up an altar? What part of your own healing is linked to your ancestral healing? Okay, that is not accidental. Nothing about my readings are accidental, but this week in particular is very, very potent. Okay, we've got Halloween. Um, Dia de los Muertos, gay day season here, day of, day of the dead, season of the dead, time to not just connect with your dead. I mean, I'm always talking about connect, every video I'm talking about connecting with your dead. So y'all know above all that I'm not just relegating this to one day of the freaking month or a season, but so that, to, that being said, you should always every day be doing some sort of connection. It doesn't have to be at an altar. You are the altar. So you're always connecting and you are the offering. You are the blessing. And, and what you do in through your own life is, is what is reflected in the ancestors. But um, powerful, potent work. I would advise that you get an ancestral journal and a journal for your guides that are not your ancestors and begin Tracking down your dreams, tracking down your readings, tracking down your discoverings and your workings with um, those spirits. And so as 
with all, I send you guys much love, much grace, much peace. Um, and again, October 29th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Last time to get $300 off. Possess your spirit. Um, lies. <laughs> Embodying your high priestess chords. All right. So if this is something that calls to you, we've got payment plans. You can get $300 off the payment plan or just the straight full payment. All the information is linked down below. I can't wait to see y'all guys there. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Please like, share, and subscribe. Everybody in your tribe needs this. Go share it. I'm going to see y'all next week. I pray that you are well and continue on um, doing the work, whatever that means for you, and um, being a beacon of progression and, and light and transformation in this world.